Thursday was Capano's last chance to redeem himself in the eyes of the 12 men and women who say he murdered 30-year-old Anne-Marie Fahey June 27, 1996. But the once prominent attorney ruined his opportunity with a defiant 45-minute statement that included quotes from former Vice President Hubert Humphrey and the Beatles. And not once did Capano show remorse for Fahey's death, other than to say if he could trade places with her now, he would. In closing arguments, Prosecutor Colum Connolly called Capano, quote, a black hole of evilness that sucked in a lot of people and ruined their lives, while defense attorney Jack O'Donnell said his client's not playing with a full deck. However, 11th hour neuropsychological tests conducted Wednesday came back negative. The jury took three and a half hours to return their vote. When it was announced, Capano's mother and two of his daughters embraced and sobbed. As Capano was being led out of the courtroom, he mouthed quietly to his crying mother, sister and daughters, it's okay, you'll be all right. Defense attorneys say they're severely disappointed with the jury's vote. Well, obviously it's devastating and you know, the verdict itself was bad enough and then to have to come back and hear this at this point in time. Uh, we're very disappointed uh, at the same time, uh, optimistic on our uh, appellate chances. Uh, we're not going to stop fighting uh, ever. That's not in any of our character, I don't think, as you've seen. And um, Tom's optimistic and wants to get the process rolling too. But personally, uh, you know, professionally, it's, uh, it's uh, crushing to have the jury say that to you. Meantime, the Fahey's say they would have been satisfied with whatever the jury returned. You know, we've said all along that, that we respect all 12 jurors, and whatever they decided, we have the utmost respect for them because we know how hard they've worked the whole time, and, uh, and we think that, that their words speak, you know, more eloqu eloquently than we can about, about the sentencing. Judge William Swain Lee will make the all on whether Capano lives or dies. No Last idea. night he set no timetable for his decision. We wanted to establish certain facts through his testimony and um, reveal inconsistencies and uh, characteristics he had and um, and I, I think they were revealed. The jury itself, um, just from, from observing them, they seem to be sort of a um, unified group. Um, just from what we could observe in the courtroom. And uh, uh, they seem to be of the same mind about a lot of things. So it wasn't a big surprise, I guess, that, uh, that most of them thought the same way about the, the aggravators and mitigators. I do understand that it was it, one of the biggest cases Delaware's ever had. At the time, like in the beginning when I was picked, I don't really think so. In fact, let's just talk about the jury. It was like a job to you. You went in there every day. In fact, you said something about you might, you might even miss it a little bit. Yeah, I think, that. you know, we all, uh, I joked around a little bit saying, you know, I think I'm going to have separation anxiety from you guys. <laughs> you know, you're with these people for three and a half months or whatnot, and, um, and you know, walking into the courthouse and seeing the, the people in the front as you're putting your purse on the conveyor belt and, you know, hi, how you guys doing? Great, okay, see you later. How do you feel about the group that, that came together to make this decision? I think it was a very, very good group. Um, I was, I was pleased. Um, you know, you never know what to expect, especially, you, you know, you're picked and then you wait so long to get to see who else you're going to be with. Um, and I think it was a very good group. We all got along well and um, I think respected each other mm -hmm. as far as opinions and that right. kind of thing. But let's start with the process. What was the process like? I think a lot of people are just curious. Um, well, I think that after about three months of not being able to talk about something, there's a lot of venting going on. Um, so uh, I guess in the beginning it was a lot of people just saying how they felt. How many votes were there to, to convict him? We just did one at the end. So um, when know, we, we kind of knew where people stood and how they felt and why, most importantly, why they felt the way they did. So the vote didn't take place until the third day, necessarily? Right. Yeah. What were some of the sticking points about the trial and that factored into your decision? Wow. Um, I think there were a lot. Um, for, and, and I can only speak for me personally, is that I know for me, um, the way he was on the stand, um, Jerry's testimony, which I give him a lot of credit for, um, that, that's a, I think that's a very hard thing to do. Um, and it, obviously, he, it showed that it was hard for him. 
but his testimony and, of course, his lawyer, Dan Lyons, um, and the letters that, that Tom wrote to McIntyre, and that kind of said a lot. And then Emory's diary, things. Do you think there was a moment when you knew how you were going to vote? In the when verdict? I voted? <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't, I, honestly, I did not know until, until I did that vote that, that third day. There are many lawyers in town who say that Capano quote unquote hung himself mm -hmm. when he took the stand. Tell us about your feelings when you watch Tom Capano take the stand and speak to you. Um, that, that's, I, I guess it's kind of hard to say. I, I'm not really sure because first of all he was up there for so long. Um, he did tend to talk a lot in, in my opinion. Um, he didn't seem very remorseful whether it was an accident or not. Um, and uh, as far as would the verdict, do I think the verdict would have been different had he not taken the stand? I don't know because honestly I can remember thinking to myself, um, you know, I want him to take the stand and tell me what happened. I want him to tell me that he didn't do it. Did you believe his story that Debbie McIntyre was there and that uh, she shot Anne-Marie Fahey? In the beginning I did. I, I, you know, I wasn't sure. I, I thought, you know, yeah, that, that could have happened. Um, and, and, you know, there were so many lies that it, you had to come down to figure out who you believed and who you didn't. And, and ultimately, that's like I said, that's why you, know, you come up with these questions and then you research the answer to those questions. Was it difficult to look at the cooler that sat there in front of you every day? Um, it was extremely difficult, extremely. It was a lot easier when it was the first cooler that wasn't the actual cooler. Um, but yeah, because every time you look at that cooler, you immediately think that, um, you know, a person was, was in there. The penalty phase was difficult on the jurors and uh, the people that were at the trial. Mm -hmm. Was it more difficult to have to go through the penalty phase? than the deliberation of whether he was guilty or not guilty? Um, you know, for me, I'm not really sure because I think for one thing at that point, when you hit the penalty phase, um, it's almost like you've, you've done the really hard part. You've made your decision and, and you've, you've gone over so much information. Um, and, you know, I was so confident with with my decision. It's like the Fahey's say, this is not a celebration. Uh, when they left the courtroom oh. the day that the guilty verdict came down, the crowd cheered. Yeah, we could actually hear it outside. You could. <laughs> when we were sitting in the courtroom, the courtroom was very silent. You could probably hear a pin drop, but then all of a sudden you heard this big roar from outside the other doors. How did that make you feel? Good. Actually, um, that that day when I when we walked in and Especially where I sat, um, I could kind of look over and see um, Brian Fahey, and uh, I felt because I was so confident in my decision, and I felt so good that I did the right thing. You know, I looked at him, and and I was just like, you know, it's gonna, it's going to be okay. 